and I noticed that the more that they prepared and like wanted to do really well, the less I focused on what was going on at stage mm. rather than the message they were trying mm. to um, embody by what they were mm. doing. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Ignite, where we discuss hot topics around our campus. We're your hosts, Matthew Taylor. And I'm John Abakioki. And guys, for this week's episode, we are talking about the power of the Ministry of Music. We've brought on two very special guests representing both Crosswalk and Merge to share their perspective on the impact that music can have during a worship service. They'll both be speaking on enhancing their relationships with God through their passions of music and how their respective journeys have been through their worship leading scene and the results it's had on their personal walks with Christ. And with that, let's get into the episode. Thank you guys so much for being here today. I want to ask you guys a uh, brief introduction, your name, your class standing, and your position regarding music that we're going to be talking about today. Hi guys, um, I'm Ariel, um, class standing. I'm a senior, um, Southern Adventist University. Um, and what makes you here today is that um, I am one of the core musicians at Merge as well as mm -hmm. the choir director at Merge. Um, Merge is a on-campus ministry that's under College Hill Church. Yeah. Um, it's completely student-led, so mm -hmm. students, you know, we plan the service, we, we get the musicians, we get the singers. Um, we, um, we basically only really answer to uh, Pastor, Pastor Horton, and Pastor Horton um, talks to like the actual board members, but other than that, um, you know, that, 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 that's what we do. Awesome. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Good intro. And my name's Kaylin. Um, I'm a freshman here at Southern, and um, my position in music is I'm on one of the bands at Crosswalk Church, which is also another like pretty well-known church for a lot of college students to attend to. Um, so yeah, just been doing that since August. Awesome. Nice. So to get into the questions, guys, how long have both of you guys been involved in music? And tell me about the beginning of your journeys. Man. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, dive right into it. Well, the, the, <laughs> leave nothing out. The, the way my parents would say, they'd say um, all my life. But from what I could remember, like, okay, story time. Okay. <laughs> so, what we're here for. so the first time I ever knew what music like truly, truly was is that I don't know if you guys are familiar with who John Tesh is. No. no. John Mayer, yes, John Tesh. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, John Tesh he currently has a radio show or whatever, and he doesn't do that much music anymore. But whenever he did, um, John Tesh, he wrote the NBA theme song um, in the hmm. in the 90s, but now it's changed. But anyways, there was this cassette that uh, a neighbor gave to us, um, and I was like six. And in this cassette, it was a John Tesh uh, concert in Avalon. Um, and... I saw him play, he, he was playing the piano. I was like, that's sick, <laughs> that's so cool. And like, I had, I had three siblings, um, um, still have three siblings. Uh, no, they're, they're, yes, still, no. they're still good, um, <laughs> still breathing. Um, yeah. Uh, so that so, birth, the, like the entire passion. Yeah, it really did, and I just, and we just, that's the only thing that we had, so we just kept watching it over and over and over, like five times a day. So, to my surprise, one day my dad um, um, comes in um, our little small apartment with um, four little cases in his hand, and I'm like, "What's that?" <laughs> you know, and it's you know he he bought like this this really like wacky drum <laughs> <No>. <laughs> th machine thing for my oldest brother, uh, really little baby violin for. Um, for my second oldest brother, for me, he got me a guitar actually, and for my uh, little sister, he um, had a, like a little piano, and so oh, we were just so happy, so 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 ecstatic, so so happy, and then um, so that was man, twelve years ago. Wow. Whoa. But That's where but it was begin. so funny because I ended up hating guitar at the time. Because it hurt my fingers, and I don't, I don't understand. I was like, oh, this is, this is so annoying. And so, um, whenever we moved to Tennessee from from Bronx, New York, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna try piano, and I fell up ever since. So that's awesome. awesome. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. So my journey started about. I think I've been doing music for well, 19, 15 years. So wow. I started when I was four. Wow. Um, 
And I didn't have a person that like specifically inspired me, but there is a video on GodTube somewhere of me singing <laughs> indescribable for my whole church and it is so embarrassing, wow. but my family loves it. <laughs> Anyways, so wow. that's probably like the earliest memory I have of doing music. And um, I'm actually the same as you. I started out with guitar <laughs> and hated it because I thought six strings was too many to keep track of. I was yeah. like, ukulele, we can work with that. Guitar, yeah. no. So I picked up piano, not as talented as you, but my favorite <laughs> ultimate thing. <laughs> He's like, I, stop. He's like, I mean, yeah, Praise but. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I played piano for several years and then I also sing, mostly just sing now. But Beautiful. yeah, do have a background in piano. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So. You guys are now involved here at like we've talked about the two churches and growing up in the, um, and now being at the Adventist community, if you didn't grow up there, how would you say that your relationship with music and your relationship with Christ in the church has grown together? Mm. When it comes to like music and me and like church and stuff, I think of it all as like another form of communication. Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, they tell their stories through like songwriting and whether that's Christian or secular, it's generally, it's generally a story and a feeling that they have. So when I think of like how music has impacted me when it comes to church is like it's another way of connecting mm -hmm. with others whether they're on stage singing whether you're like all in a circle singing together and it's just like another language and another communication so I think that's been like the biggest thing mm -hmm. that I enjoy about it and so when I'm up doing music I ask myself how am I communicating to others mm -hmm. and what image are they seeing from my communication um, in mm -hmm. music so mm -hmm. yeah and it's so beautiful like when that thing that you're giving back with is not something that stresses you out and it's more something that just like adds to your life and yes. it's something that you look forward to which I think God ultimately like seeks out of our relationships with him and so it's just beautiful to see how he incorporated music into life and how for so many it's not something stressful. It just adds to life like his relationship with us. So we've touched on it a little bit, but you play for Merge and you play for Crosswalk. You yeah. guys have both been involved in that those mm -hmm. ministries. Mm -hmm. How have you guys gotten involved and how those really affected you guys? Okay, well, story time. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so, round two, let's so, go. So <laughs> there was a church I was playing at before. I didn't even know Merge existed. And there were things that were going on in that church that mm -hmm. I did not like. Mm -hmm. And it became a very toxic situation and I was not able to worship at all. And that was, and, and like I reached my, my tipping point um, at, in the middle of the first semester I came to Southern. Okay. And that was um, two years ago, exactly, mm -hmm. um, in, in the winter semester. And I was just like, man, I don't, I don't know what church to go to. Mm -hmm. And a good friend of mine that I had met literally that semester was said, hey, have you ever been to Merge? I was like, no. Mm -hmm. What's that? I was like, well, it's, there's a gospel church, uh, we, a multicultural gospel type mm -hmm. of church, you know, at Southern. And I was like, they have that here? <laughs> I was like, like, what? And mind you, I've never, I've not grow, I did not grow up in a, in a gospel setting at all. And um, I was like, you know what, let's try it. You know, me and my girlfriend, we went. And from, I, I remember the set list. I remember the sermon. Wow. wow. I, I, I rem Good memory. Oh, my. I was like, <laughs> immediately, I bugged uh, uh, Josh. Um, uh, he's my roommate now. Okay. Um, and he's also the music director for Merge. Um, I'm, I'm the choir director now, but he, he, he's, he's the music director. I went up to him and I kept bugging him every week. How can I get involved? Mm -hmm. How can I get involved? He didn't know I could play piano like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, <laughs> I was like, now please. I was like, please, <laughs> I need to be involved. I need, like, I, I need this. And, uh, and um, because I had been so used to uh, playing uh -huh. um, for this church that whenever I um, stopped playing there, because I was like, I'm not worshiping. It was hard for me to find a church that I was like called, like, like I could call home, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know? And and I think at the time too, like uh, Crosswalk wasn't even at Abba's house yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was like, man, where am I going, you yeah. know? I like, and um, you know, I, I kept church hopping and um, 
and but with marriage, I was like, wow, that just I just felt good, mm -hmm. wow. and I, I felt yeah. blessed immediately, and everybody was so kind. You know, I really, like, you know, whenever you get those Jesus encounters from like one person, and like, you, you think that you're going somewhere, and you think you're not gonna really feel anything. Like, let, let me just try this, mm -hmm. you know, right. and right. then. With someone just greeting you, with someone just serving you food, you just mm. feel like the presence of Jesus, and you're like, yeah. "Wow!" And the Pollocks help with that. Yeah. Yes, and yes. I'm just and I'm just yeah. like, I'm coming back, wow. yeah. you know. And so and and it's helped me grow my faith so much more. I was like, "Lord, this is where you wanted me to be. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for this beautiful opportunity." Because I I would not miss it for the world right mm -hmm. now, you know. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. Good story. It's really good story. Yes. Um, so I think my senior year of high school, I was attending GCA, Boarding Academy. Mm. Yes, and my roommate, Summer Nash, probably know her through her dad who teaches here some, mm. uh, but she invited me to come with her to her house in Chattanooga one weekend. And she's like, we can go to Crosswalk Church. And um, she's like, I know you've never been, but I kind of want to show it to you. So I was like, okay. So we went there and I remember the seeing the music and the sermon too, but the music at the very beginning, I was like, wow, like that is awesome. Everybody was like, they weren't overly dressed up. They just seemed so comfortable. They seemed so inviting. And just hearing them right off the bat, I was like, that is that is awesome. Like, mm -hmm. this is so cool to me. Um, and she's like, hey, like, I think you are talented enough. I think you should try to audition and like, see if that's something you can do. And I was like, no way there's no way I'm as good as any of those people up there um, but I ended up praying a lot about it and I like emailed them um, that was about the fall of my senior year I didn't actually get a response back until a year later wow. about them saying like hey like well I think they answered me a couple months later saying like if you're not in the area this doesn't really make sense right now because I was at least an hour away um, but then they got back with me again that summer and they're like, hey, like, if you're still interested, we can set up an audition for you. And um, I was kind of just like shocked because I'm like, mm. this is like full circle. We, we started so far ago and like they still had that intention to reach back out mm. to me. Um, and so they set up an audition for me in September, I think of this last year, maybe. Mm. Yeah. And um, I remember I got there with the full expectation that you were going to have to be up on the stage by yourself with like your in-ears <laughs> to like sing like acapella and I was like this is going to be horrifying I'm so nervous um, and then as soon as I got there they said that that was the first audition they had ever done where they just sat in a circle it was very stripped down you had one acoustic guitar wow. and it felt so much more it just was so cool because I was so nervous but at that moment like some of the nerves went away because it was less mm. less planned and less performance like mm. um, and then I also remember the director, he talked about that more so than you singing on pitch. I mean, yes, they were looking for a certain level, but like more so than having every note and every beat right, mm -hmm. they were looking for somebody who was at the church because they wanted to be yeah. there and then they yeah. found that home. Mm -hmm. And yes. it was just so cool for me to hear because the words that he said was literally what I quoted in my prayers mm. for weeks wow. before. And so after like my audition, I was just kind of like shook. I was like, how in the world is the director saying the exact same thing that I prayed mm. for? Um, wow. I literally cried after my audition. Oh. And I don't think I cry that much, but I literally cried. And I was like, what the is wrong with me? You. Yeah, yeah. I was you. like, what is going on with me? But, <laughs> but yeah, so it's, wow. been, it's been awesome to be with them ever since and yeah. One of my questions that I'm so curious to ask you guys about is what is one of the most powerful or life-changing experiences worship leading that you guys have experienced thus far? I think one of the most impactful things for me was seeing that that was the only service that teens who were confused about every aspect of their life, they stood up. Mm -hmm. And then they would come up after and they'd say like, I want to get baptized and like this mm -hmm. service, like this this Friday night really changed everything mm -hmm. for me and to see that it was part of the music that ultimately that's when it hit for them mm -hmm. um, like that was just so eye-opening to me because I'm like wow I am such a like small person and just one 
like millionth of the universe and God used me to change just this one person mm -hmm. and move their direction further. So that was probably the most life-changing mm -hmm. thing for me. Good. That's good. For yeah. me, um, my girlfriend and I, we like to uh, do day trips to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And there's a church there, uh, West End, Seventh-day Adventist Church. And honestly, we really go to Atlanta for like two reasons. Um, one of the reasons is uh, because it's the closest place um, that has a Dominican restaurant. And, <laughs> you know, like, and, and like and the, the, the food smacks, right? <laughs> and also, it's also the closest to your pie that's open currently. So that's yeah. also food related. Right. But so, <laughs> I love food. So, <laughs> but whenever we went over there, um, we we're like, you know what? Let, 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 you know, let's try and go, go to church there. And we we're like, we're just looking at Adventist churches. And I was like, let's just go to this one, you know. And it had been a while that, because, you know, um, like you say, you're, you're talking about getting burnt out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, it had been a while since I had just sat down at a service. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like, let me not worry about, not like, like anything mm -hmm. except for worshiping God, you know. Mm. And so I go to this service, and again, I remember the whole set list. I remember the sermon. I remember, like, I remember the altar call. Wow, that like, wow. is insane. <laughs> Man, but it was just something I was just like, wow. Mm. It was like another come to Jesus moment that, 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 that I had, you know? And um, that, that moment was so fulfilling, and I was like, this is why I do it. Mm -hmm. This is why I do what I do, mm -hmm. because um, this, this is how I'm feeling now. But, I mean, I'm, I'm more than a feeling too, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm saved. Praise, praise Jesus, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, like, why not give him all the glory? And, like, that's, and that's what I want to bring, you know, um, to others, you know, like to help people understand to what great lengths, like, what the things that God has done for us, mm -hmm. you know, and especially with uh, with all, all these praises, you know, mm -hmm. um, every every worship song has a um, meaning and and it has um, a message for somebody, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and especially that day, it was songs. They were all songs glorifying God that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They they and and one of the last songs uh, is called Trust Me, and okay. Trust Me is. It's a song. It's by uh, Richard Smallwood. He uh, he writes a lot of choir music, but the whole time that song was in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. He's saying, "I will never leave you if wow. you would only trust me. Mm -hmm. um, I'll fight your battles if you'd only trust me." Mm -hmm. um, um, and it's, "I am that I am," mm -hmm. and, and and like those are all the words of the song. And but it sounds so beautiful. I was like, "Wow, I gotta trust him," you know. Mm -hmm. like, and that, it's just. It's just always been in my head. It's just always been in my head. And mm -hmm. so, like, there's just certain memories that just live rent-free, and I just think about often, you know, mm -hmm. that's one of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ariel, Kaylin, thank you guys so much for being here. Yeah. I do want to ask you thank guys. You having us. Yes, of course. Yeah. I want to ask you guys just one more closing question. And it's really, how do you recommend that someone who wants to get involved in the ministry of music, where to start and where to have their mindset? First, I would say to just go to a lot of different things and find really by like diversifying and seeing what mm. fits with you um, finding where you do have the passion to mm -hmm. be all in because um, you there's a saying that's like you get out what you put in mm -hmm. and so if you're only putting in that half effort not only is like people around you gonna notice but you're gonna feel it back mm -hmm. towards yourself and um, you what you're getting yeah. yeah yeah exactly 100%. so if you're like okay I'm gonna bring my absolute best and like I'm gonna put in everything that I got then you're gonna feel that energy from God like reciprocated mm -hmm. and stuff and he's going to keep like pursuing you and opening doors and um, mm -hmm. it's not always in the way that you expect it it's not always at the time that you expect mm -hmm. it but back to what you were saying like don't take no for an answer and just like um, keep pursuing because he is in a lifelong relationship of pursuing you and so if you show that you're even willing to pursue him one tenth of the amount that he pursues you then you're set mm -hmm. you're set amen yeah.
Guys, this is so much fun. And I have to say, one of my absolutely favorite conversations. Every conversation has been so powerful and yeah. so meaningful. But I have to say, this one hits so close to home for me. So thank you guys again so yeah. much for coming. Ariel, Kaylin, you. you guys are amazing. Thank you appreciate so much for having us. Yeah. Yes. Matthew, I have to say, I just said this to everybody else here, but that was my absolute favorite episode. Mm. I mean, oh my goodness, the subject matter at hand, music, God, passion, ministry, all those things coupled together. Yeah. Uh, made for an amazing episode. It was awesome to be able to represent Merge and uh, Crosswalk, which yeah. are both very popular here on campus. I've been able to attend both and have been blessed every time that I go to visit. Yeah, no, two amazing places for sure. If you guys like this episode, you guys can find more of our content on our YouTube channel, The School of Journalism and Communications. And be sure to follow us on our Instagram at IgniteSAU for updates on upcoming episodes and more. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's conversation, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.